What is up guys, Ame back with another video. In this one, we're traveling to the Howling Fjord to make a stop in our first Northrend dungeon, Utgard Keep. We'll go over important trash mob abilities, boss strategies, and achievements you can complete in this dungeon. Let's get into it. So to get things started, there's only a couple trash mobs of note in this dungeon. Dragon Flayer Weaponsmiths have a Disarm, a Concussion Blow that will stun the target for 5 seconds, and a Cleave, which is the important one, so just make sure you face these away from the group. Enslaved Proto Drakes will rend you, applying a bleed debuff, and then they will use Fire Breath and a Knock Away. Because of this, make sure the tank faces the Drake away from the group and has his back to a wall, so that you aren't knocked away and then pull more packs. After the Proto Drake room, you'll encounter Dragon Flayer Strategists. These guys will drop ticking bombs on the ground that will explode after a couple of seconds. Don't stand on them and you'll be good to go. Ticking Bomb is also a casted ability and can be interrupted. Once we get past all that trash, the first boss we'll encounter is Prince Keleseth. He has three abilities. He'll cast Shadow Bolt at a player, dealing a good amount of damage, and then his main ability is Frost Tomb. Frost Tomb encases a random party member in ice for 20 seconds and inflicts damage every second. You can free the encased player by attacking and breaking the Frost Tomb. Lastly, he will summon Skeleton Adds that have the ability to Crepify, which reduces strength and movement speed for 10 seconds. To get things started, the tank will run in and pick up Prince and the rest of the group will stack up close to the tank. What this does is minimize the distance you have to move to break the Frost Tomb, as well as enable you to cleave the skeletons down with the boss. The skeletons will also resurrect throughout the fight, so having them grouped up will make it easier to kill them again if needed. In Heroic, if you are going for the achievement on the rocks for your Glory of the Hero achievement, what you'll want to do is have the tank move the boss away from anyone who gets Frost Tombed so that the tomb isn't broken by any AoE. This is a good time for the tank to pop defensives and the healer can focus on keeping the person in the frost tomb alive. Also note, getting out of the tomb with a pally bubble, mage ice block, those kind of abilities, that will void the achievement as well, so make sure you don't do that. Between these two bosses, there aren't any new trash mobs that are important. So next up, we have Scarvald the Constructor and Dalron the Controller. Scarvald will charge a random player, stunning them for two seconds and inflicting damage. He will also use Stone Strike, inflicting damage and knocking his target back slightly. Dalron will cast Shadow Bolt, dealing decent damage as well as Debilitate, lowering attack, casting movement speed, and dealing damage every 2 seconds. You will fight these bosses at the same time, and the main mechanic of this fight is that when one boss dies, a ghost version of that boss will spawn and use the same abilities. However, when in ghost form, threat cannot be generated, so the key is to kill these bosses as close together as possible so you don't have to deal with the tank losing threat on one of the ghosts. The easiest way to do this fight is for everyone to get right up close and personal to Scarvald's butt. What this does is completely eliminate the charge mechanic and turns this fight into a basic tank and spank. Burn Scarvald down to about 10%, then switch to Dalron. Kill him, then kill Scarvald. On heroic mode, Dalron will summon a couple of skeleton adds, nothing serious, just cleave these down as well. Spank these two nerds and grab your loot and emblems. The only new trash mob to worry about between this boss and the last boss is the Dragon Flayer Spiritualist. These are shaman type mobs that have healing wave, so kill this mob first or just be aware of the heal and interrupt it. Easy peasy. Last up we have Ingvar the Plunderer. This fight has two phases. In phase 1 he will use Cleave, cleaving his target and closest ally in front of him, Smash, which does large damage in a 10 yard cone in front of him, and Staggering Roar, which does damage and interrupts any spells being cast for 6 seconds. Once you kill him, he will resurrect as a ghoul version of himself and do similar abilities. Dark Smash, which is Smash but a spooky dark version of it, damage in a cone in front of him. This will also knock everyone down and stun them for 2 seconds. Shadow Axe is another ability he will use. He will throw an axe at a random player. This axe will then spin in place doing AoE damage. Bow Strike is a curse that he will put on the tank that causes any healing done to the target afflicted with it to deal damage to the healer. This can be decursed. And lastly, Dreadful Roar, which works just like Staggering Roar, but interrupts any spells being cast for 8 seconds. The tank will run in, pick up Ingvar, and face him away from the group. Whenever Smash or Dark Smash is being cast, the tank needs to sidestep the ability or run through the boss so that he doesn't take that damage. The most important part of the fight is that whenever you see Staggering Roar or Dreadful Roar cast, you need to stop casting as to not get silenced for 6 or 8 seconds. When you see Dark Smash start to cast in Phase 2, LOS behind these pillars so that you don't take the damage or stun. And that's about it. Rinse and repeat till the boss is dead. There you have it guys. First dungeon in North rank completed. Follow these steps and you'll have this dungeon cleared in no time. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, hit that subscribe button down below. 
I'm also live on Twitch throughout the week at twitch.tv slash TV. Stop by and say hi sometime. That's it for me today, though, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.